guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. So much news to cover. We're going to talk about Neymar and Holland if their future is at Barcelona and which one is the priority of Juan Laporta. Give you an update on Messi's future and also the fact that he had a party yesterday with the whole entire first team as well. Give you an update on the squad reinforcement that is planned for this summer and also talk about the future of Ronald Coleman and Xavi and then end off with an injury update on Ansu Fati and Ousmane Dembele. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button, try to get the 200 likes on this video. It would be very much appreciated. And of course, hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news. Firstly, around Neymar coming in from Rack 1 saying that Barcelona's number one goal this summer is Neymar. They have already spoken and for this reason the Brazilian has not renewed his contract yet with PSG and Barcelona and PSG have already spoken about the transfer and PSG's first answer was no. Barcelona are convinced that Neymar will leave Paris for a much lower price than what they offered for two years ago which was 130 million plus three players and Neymar would do anything to return to Barcelona. Barcelona are considering Neymar's return due to three reasons. Number one, the quality of the player. Number two, his arrival would be linked with Messi's continuation and number three, he would generate a commercial impact. The club have indeed informed Neymar that they want him for next season and will continue to maintain communications until he renews his contract with PSG. There are also reports coming in from France saying that Neymar will continue to remain a target for Barcelona until he signs his new contract with PSG. Now, Alfredo Martinez from On The Thiru, who of course is a very reliable source in Spain, he's still coming out saying that Juan Laporta's desired transfer target this summer is Erling Holland. And Malor from ESPN has come out saying that Juan Laporta is exploring the deals for Erling Holland and Neymar. The money involved in the Erling Holland deal will make it very difficult to happen this summer, and Barcelona will continue to monitor Neymar's situation with a view of bringing him back until he renews his contract with PSG. So we have two top sources in Spain saying two completely different things. One is saying that Neymar's the number one priority. Another one is saying that Holland's the number one priority. Right now, I have absolutely no idea. You have, you know, a cheap option in Neymar, 30 years old, because of course his contract does end next season. He'll come for Barcelona this summer, maybe for around 70 to 100 million. Maybe you can add a player to bring that price down. But Erling Holland is going to cost you a fat 200 million fee, you know, transfer fee, commission for his dad, commission for his agent as well, commission to Dortmund as well, because you have to pay off some other fees for Usman Dembele as well. But all I can say right now is watch out for the game later today, Manchester City versus PSG, because if PSG win this Champions League, I think Neymar will 100% stay. If not, I think he's gonna bounce ship and maybe try his best to come to Barcelona and play with Leo Messi. But then you might be wondering, oh, we don't need Neymar, we need number nine. We already have, you know, Ansu Fati. But there are reports coming in saying that if Neymar comes this summer, Ansu Fati will be the number nine, which means we'll have a front three of Messi on the right, Neymar on the left, and Ansu Fati up top. And if Neymar doesn't come and Holland comes, it'll be a front three of Messi, Erling Holland, and Ansu Fati. And let me know down in the comments below which one would you rather have. For me, I'll lean towards the Messi, Holland, Ansu Fati. But of course, if Neymar comes in, he comes in. But right now, we have to watch out for PSG and what they do in the Champions League tonight. Manchester City versus PSG, like I said, tonight. And it's definitely going to have a big factor of whether or not Neymar leaves PSG this summer. Speaking about Leo Messi, we have some news in regards to his future coming in from Xavi Campos from TV3, saying that the day after taking office as the president, Juan Laporta and Leo Messi met together to start talking about his future. Laporta told Messi to trust him that the proposal would be very interesting for both sportingly and economically and that everyone would come out of it happy. He goes on to say that Messi and Laporta had lunch together the day after that Laporta took office as the Barcelona president. It took place at Messi's home and the first meeting was very cordial and positive. Messi explained to Laporta that he has not decided his future quite yet, but that he would listen to the offer of Barcelona first. And Laporta told him that he was convinced that he'd make him a likable proposal for both in terms of economically and sportingly as well. Messi explained his plans to the Barcelona president, which was to include playing for two more years at the highest level and then moving to Miami to end his career as a footballer. Laporta left the lunch with optimism about Messi's continuation and claimed to those people that are very close to him. And Messi also finished his lunch with good feelings about the possibility of continuing at Barcelona. And can this year have come out saying that Barcelona are working to do everything possible to keep Leo Messi at the club this summer? The feelings have been very good after initial contest and the feeling at the club right now is that Messi wants to stay. And the breaking news coming in last night from ESPN Argentina from Polo who is very very close to Leo Messi and his family. He came out saying that Messi will continue at Barcelona for two more years and the club will also try to sign Neymar. So the reporter Sebastian Vignolo is very very close to Messi and he's coming out saying that Messi is going to stay at Barcelona but the scary thing to me is that he said he's only going to be staying for two more years. That report from Xavi Campos about Messi going to stay for Barcelona for two more years and then going to Miami could be true but he also put out a big statement saying that Barcelona are trying to sign Neymar this summer. I do believe that Messi is going to stay this summer but the question now is that who is Juan Laporta going to bring in as that big target as that big summer signing? Will it be Erling Haaland? Will it be Neymar? Like I said wait for that game later tonight if PSG get knocked out I think Neymar is going to push for that move but it does indeed look like that Messi is going to be staying at Barcelona for at least two more seasons. Now yesterday Messi did host a party at his house and it wasn't because he signed that new contract with Barcelona it was because Barcelona had a big strong victory against Valencia. Juan Martí came out saying that Messi has organized a meal today at 
at his house, inviting all the first team players. His intention was to celebrate the victory against Valencia and to focus on the final game of the season, and more specifically, that game this weekend against Atletico Madrid. And Marco have come out back in that statement as well, saying that all the players went to Messi's house to have a big meal, and their partners went with them as well. And after a very difficult season, the relationship between the players have improved considerably. Now, after the meal ended at Messi's house, there were reports coming out saying that Barcelona squad has broken the league health protocols of COVID-19 after gathering at a lunch at Leo Messi's house, and a disciplinary file has been opened. But Barcelona has assured that the team has not violated the COVID-19 protocols at any time, as the squad formed in a single group which already existed during the training sessions or when the squad travels together, and the safety distance, social distancing has been respected at Messi's residence. Now, a weird thing happened during this meal, as you expect, the press were outside Messi's house trying to get, you know, some inside scoops, of course, recording every second, and they recorded the players chanting, Campiones, Campiones, Ole, Ole, Ole. Now, why are we chanting Campiones? We haven't won anything yet. Are they celebrating the Copa del Rey win after, you know, two weeks? I don't know. But they were at Messi's house. There's video proof of it. There's audio of it. They were in Messi's house chanting Campiones, Campiones, ole, ole, ole. No idea why. Are they so confident they're going to win the league? They're starting to celebrate now? I don't know. But anyways, they were doing that. That is a bit weird in my opinion. And of course, all the players went there. I have some pictures on the screen right now. You know, Trincao went, Pedri went, Fernandez went, by the way. I can't believe Fernandez managed to sneak into Messi's house at that dinner. What a lucky guy that is. He's only played like, what, 17 minutes for Barcelona this entire season, and he still ended up going to Messi's house for a meal. Lucky him. All the players went, of course. Mingueta went from the Barcelona B as well. I'm not quite too sure if Elish Mariba went, but I know Mingueta went 100%. And it was a nice little day out for the squad to bond for the big, big games coming up in La Liga. Now let's get into the news in regards to the squad reinforcement this summer. Rack 1 Gerard Romero has come out saying that Barcelona's priority this summer, firstly in the defense, to sign Eric Garcia and sell Umtiti. In the midfield is to trust Ida Tariba and Nico Gonzalez, but if anyone is sold, maybe we can make one signing there. In the attack is to sign Sergio Aguero or Depay or both if Braithwaite leaves. So what I'm going to do now is run through each position and give you guys all the news starting that position at the moment and see who's going to be coming in and who's going to be coming out. Firstly in the defense in regards to Sam Umtiti, coming in from Fabrizio Romano saying that Barcelona wanted to sell Sam Umtiti in the summer and Zenit St. Petersburg are interested, but the player isn't convinced about the Russian team, and right now Umtiti wants to wait for more offers. In regards to Eric Garcia, Fernando Polo has come out saying that the signing of Eric Garcia enters the final stretch. Barcelona and Eric Garcia's agents continue to negotiate, but they're just now discussing minor clauses before eventually closing the agreement. Initially, Garcia and his agent did not agree well with the decision of the new sporting management to reduce the previous agreed salary to be able to sign more players in the next market. However, Eric Garcia ended up accepting the situation and agreed to sacrifice part of his salary that was previously agreed with the other board in order to fulfill his dream of returning to Barcelona. The club in which he left back in 2017. An official announcement regarding Eric Garcia's transfer isn't expected until the end of the season, as both Barcelona and Manchester City are still fighting for trophies. Some other news in regards to the defense, first coming in from Gerard Romero. Again, this is his opinion, by the way. He came out saying that the delay is still crazy to come to Barcelona again. Wouldn't look into this too much. Wait for some more concrete sources. He's been saying this every week now for the past month or so, so I wouldn't look into it too much. We also have some news in regards to Emerson coming to Barcelona this summer, coming in from Mundo Deportivo, saying that Paris Saint Germain have offered less than 15 million euros for Emerson, which is very, very low for Barcelona. And they're not even considering the offer. 50 million, by the way, that's just a slap in the face for Barcelona. They go on to say that if there's no higher offer, the Brazilian will join Barcelona's squad in the preseason in mid July. Barcelona have to pay 9 million to Real Batista to sign him this summer, and if Barcelona sell him before January 2022, Real Batista will receive 50% of that sale. Now, reports from Real Batista are claiming that they get 50% of that sale, but reports from Barcelona are saying that they only get 20% of that sale. And Barcelona are considering right now that Emerson and Des are going to be the right back options for next season, and that Des can also act as a backup for Jordi Alba in that left back position, and also Alejandro Balde can gain more experience. But if a big offer does arrive for Emerson, Barcelona could sell him, and I'd watch out for him being included in that Neymar deal if it happens. Now, one of Barcelona's current right backs at the moment is Sergio Roberto. This one's coming in from Mateo Morito, saying that Sergio Roberto's priority is to continue at Barcelona. The club is offering him a one-year extension, but he wants two years. Long businesses, but in the end, they are supposed to reach an agreement, and there is optimism for this deal. But Alfredo Martinez from On the Theatre has come out saying that Sergio Roberto is not close to renewing with Barcelona at the moment. His current contract ends in 2022, and Barcelona are offering him a one-year extension, but Roberto isn't convinced and wants at least a couple of years. Into the midfield now, first coming in from Mundo Deportivo in regards to Nico Gonzalez saying that the contract renewal of Nico Gonzalez is on track. Only a few details remain and then he will start his contract extension for three more years and right now Nico Gonzalez will be a Barcelona B player next season but he'll have more involvement in the first team. Now there is some transfer news coming in in regards to Ricky Puch. Now it's coming in from Calcio Mercado who are not very reliable whatsoever. They don't even have any reliability in Italy as well. They're coming out saying that both Inter Milan and Juventus have shown interest in Ricky Puch. The transfer with either team would very likely be a player swap. When looking into this too much not coming in from any reliable source and if Ricky Puch was to leave Barcelona, it would definitely be on loan. And finally, let's get into the news in regards to strikers coming into Barcelona this summer, besides from that marquee signing of, you know, Neymar or Holland. Coming in from Mundo Bartiva, which was on the front cover of their page this morning, saying that Pai, 
looks for a house. They go to the city that he was in Barcelona last Wednesday looking for a house in the city. He wants to be a Barcelona player despite the club offering much lower than what they did back in January. They also say that right now Juventus is attempting to convince Depay to join them instead of Barcelona, but right now Depay prefers Barcelona. Juventus would sign him without cost, but they lack success. Depay prefers Barcelona and Coleman absolutely loves him, but right now in the Barcelona board, they're still undecided. Now let's get into the news starting Barcelona over the past 24 hours, firstly coming in from Mundo Portivos, and the Barcelona refused the rumors coming in from Gutron stating that Xavi has been contacted in case Ronald Coleman does not continue. They describe this news as destabilizing news. Now there were reports last night coming in from Qatar saying that Xavi will not renew his contract with El Said after being knocked out of the UCL there and that he wants to come to Barcelona as soon as possible. But Edu Polo, who is very, very close to Xavi and his entourage, super, super reliable as well. He's come out saying that as of right now, nothing has changed in regards to Xavi's situation at El Said. He will shortly announce that he will extend his contract until 2023 with El Said with a clause in the contract that will allow him to leave for Barcelona at any time. And also Freddy Martinez and Javi Miguel have come out back in that statement as well. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, these rumors about Xavi and Coleman, you know who's coming in, who's going to be the Barcelona manager this season, all that sort of stuff. It will not be concrete until La Liga ends, because right now, if Coleman wins La Liga, he's a million percent going to stay the manager next season. If he doesn't, it'll be a 50-50 situation, but right now, you can't call it right now. The league table is so, so close. So we're going to have to wait until the end of May for Laporta to make his decision on whether or not Coleman will continue as a Barcelona manager, but if he wins La Liga, 100% he's going to stay. Speak on winning La Liga. Barcelona will present their appeal for Coleman's sanction before the appeals committee that meets on Thursday, and the club won the Dutchman to be on the touchline for the athletic Madrid game this weekend. Next was coming in from sport from Alberto Rogue saying that Victor Valdez has accepted Juan Laporte's offer and will return to Barcelona. He'll be one of those responsible for training the goalkeepers of La Masia. Next was coming in from Mundo Deportivo saying that Barcelona's current CEO Oscar Guerrero has been fired by Juan Laporta and Fernando Rivera will be his successor. Juan Laporta has also fired all the executives from the Bartomeu era and also the four involved in the Barca gate. Adios rats. Next one's coming in from Mateo Marito from Sky Sports saying that Barcelona did not consider the jewel Conor de la Fuente leaving the club. If he leaves, it'll be on loan or with a buyback option. And Conor himself wants to grow at Barcelona, but he's looking for more playing time. And lastly, let's get into the injury updates now in regards to Usman Dembele and Ansu Fati. Firstly on Usman Dembele coming in from Cat Radio saying that Usman Dembele has only played 33 minutes in the last five games for Barcelona. From the locker room, they explained that this is because he has been suffering from discomfort in his groin since early April. For now, the idea is to let him rest as much as possible and play him only if the team needs him. This is the medical advice that Coleman is following to help the pain and also to have him available for the last four games of the season. And finally, an injury update on Ansu Fati, and it's not looking too good, guys. Coming in from Javi Mingale, you know, the injury guy himself, saying that Ansu Fati underwent his third arthroscope towards the end of March under the supervision of Dr. Ramon. It was actually a prevented measure in a desperate attempt to save part of his original meniscus, an essential factor for a long career. It also goes on to say that Ansu Fati was seen in the Copa del Rey final with several problems to be able to celebrate the title with his teammates, needing help from Junior and Dembele, who rode on his back to prevent him from jumping. Go back and look at the videos of the Copa del Rey celebration, you can clearly see that Ansu Fati was either on the back of Usman Dembele or Junior Firpo. Right now, everything depends on how Ansu Fati feels in the coming days when he does intensify his recovery and workload. A fourth operation is currently not ruled out in the event that this new therapy does not work out efficiently. But if a fourth surgery is carried out, it would no longer be Dr. Ramon, but it would be the French surgeon who Ansu Fati visited back in March in a clinic in Lyon who would be in charge of the operation. If a solution is not finally found in the coming weeks, the next step would be to remove his entire meniscus, a decision that would solve the problem for the short term and medium term but could have a serious serious problem in the long term. And Mundo Portivo came out this morning saying that it is confirmed that Ansu Fati will go through another surgery very soon. What we all thought was a very small injury has now become a very very serious injury for Ansu Fati and it looks like he may go under another surgery. But if Ansu Fati does end up deciding to remove his meniscus, I don't see him playing past the age of 28-29. His knee is going to be so so bad for the short term and the medium term. Like Javi Miguel said, he'll be fine but in the long term when he gets older to you know, the Messi and Antoine Griezmann age, he won't be able to play. And that's the worrying part. We won't have a long career from Ansu Fati, only a very short career. So we'll see what happens. Nothing confirmed quite yet. And if you didn't already know that Ansu Fati is 100% ruled out for the rest of the season, the question is now, will he make the preseason? Hopefully he won't rush himself to go back for Spain for the Euros. He'll have many more Euros to come. Hopefully he'll take his time in recovering. But right now, Ansu Fati's injury is not looking too good. So that's my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below, of course, on everything we discussed. My big question to you is, who would you rather sign for Barcelona this summer, Neymar or Erling Holland? And make sure you guys subscribe down below. And also down below is the link to my Discord, 24-hour Barcelona chat with all fans around the world. So make sure you guys join that. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.